Hello dear ones, it's Alice. Um, so, I've been doing um, Judy Satori's um, Kuan Yin activations of light for the last close to a week now. I've been concentrating on major blocks to, to the heart chakra. And um, just there are so many things I'm interested in, but I thought the heart is the center of everything. So. If, if I can't decide where to start, that would be the place to start. So that's what I did. In the evening, I've been doing this, this meditation, drinking a lot of water. And then the transformation process happens. The easy stuff happened at the beginning, you know, the delightful stuff. And then it started getting down towards the really difficult stuff. <laughs> so, and no doubt there will be more of it. <laughs> so... Just to give you an idea about yesterday, yesterday was very commotional. From the point of view of my emotional body, I felt sad all day long, and there was no particular reason for it, right? And overwhelming sadness, right? Grief from, from the seat of my soul and from my high heart. And I can remember blaming a lot of people for it with no particular cause involved. I just felt like blaming people in my mind, you know. And, and yet the energy was welling up and out and, and there, was no, there was no cause, there was no reason. So, so then last night things had gone so... Um, tumultuously all day long that I um, I thought geez I won't do that I won't do that activation of light tonight this is just like you know it feels when the, when the emotional body gets all upset it feels it feels like the end of the world it really does and so I just can't take one more night of activations of light <laughs> so uh, so I was in such a state when I went to bed that I had a vision. I sat up and, and I was doing uh, my meditation and I had a vision, which I'm going to tell you about. So, a little background here. Uh, lately, in the last month, I've been dealing with, with a nexus of, of a mental filter that involves the ego, which is my my mode of interacting with this, with this reality, societal expectations, upon which the ego depends for interaction with reality and for its actual definition of itself, and the unlimited co-creative power of humankind, which is my birthright and which uh, in, the, in my current reality is not manifested or appears not to be manifested for anyone in this world. But I will grant you that the hologram I see is only my own. Um, so, so um, what is coming up in the Claire audience realm has been the demands of society, um, the demands that I not speak my truth, that I not um, live the mission of my soul, the demands that, that I not feel my heart energy, okay, over and over again. The other thing that I kept running across was, um, was being blamed for things over and over again. It felt like other people were judging me and blaming me and like whoever I thought of, any person that I thought of, it felt like from them what I was receiving was lim thoughts of my own personal limitations. The need for me to ratchet down from unconditional love and uh, and the ability to co-create everything 
down into a kind of fulcrum down into a reality that 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 doesn't recognize that for one thing what I would hear was that um, that I was always forcing people to feel sexual and and that is interesting because one of the things that we learn when we start to explore our uh, central vertical power current the what they call kundalini energy the sushumna the ida and the pingala three channels is we start to to sense um, the pranic column what they call energy the hara line and we start to to to, to master the, the flow of energy amongst the chakras. And so, for me, the idea of the energy of the second chakra, uh, sexual energy, is of part of a whole, part of a whole, like, cascade of, of energetic responses that, that allows us to realize our greatness as, as human beings. Uh, I don't have like a societal notion about the energy of the second chakra. And instead I have a notion that that energy is part of my outpouring of creative um, impulse as form in the world, you know. But it seems that, I mean, I don't know, but it seems that for many, that energy is confined to like a societal uh, tableau in which uh, one can express only through procreation with a person of opposite gender. And, and so people seem to get stuck in, um, in that. And so, and then they're around that or like the encapsulating that energy is a repress, pr repressive societal energy which, um, uh, pours, which, which pushes that energy which pushes that energy down as, uh, as, uh, through the taboos uh, regarding um, alternate lifestyles okay and that veil beyond that veil is the infinite co-creative potential of people all right, so first we have to, to I think, let go the, um, the judgment, the judgment around um, what we term sexuality in order to reach the infinite co-creative potential of humankind. Now, I'm not saying that this has to be reflected in behavior, but in our minds, we need to let go the cage of that thinking, that societal expectation. And so this is the core of my, my blogs regarding sacred sexuality, which you can look up on your own. And uh, it has to do, it has to do with the vision that I had last night. Okay. So as I recall, it went like this. It is somewhat more involved because the mind does tend to make fantasies that are very involved. And, um, and so, you know, the vision was something like this. I imagined that I was in an alternate world where there was no free will. And I, no surprise, imagined that, that I was being judged by a tribunal of people who all said that I had no soul. I had no soul and that I was a bioengineered um, human looking program that was intended to destroy the entire world. Now, that's judgment. 
And that's a world where every, every being can experience the third chakra negative, big time. Power over, powerlessness, a slave planet. And the, and the theory was, oh yeah, I, that I had been bio, bioengineered Nightmare, right? <laughs> I had been bioengineered to take humans off planet to a slave planet where they would be, uh, they would not be able to ascend. And that millions of people had been transported through me off world for that reason. And um, let's see, how did it go? Oh, yes. And that I was not really the person who commanded this space station. The commander of the space station was talking to me and claiming that, that he was the one that was supposed to have control. But I, a bioengineered product, had stepped out, somehow cotton to the notion that there is free will, and stepped out of my own accord into a into a notion that, that, that I could control my own destiny, right? Totally scary stuff. <laughs> so, here were all the beings that I could hear on a clear plane agreeing that I was some aberrant, like, um, servo mechanism <laughs> that, had, that refused to serve. <laughs> <laughs> I can feel my gut brain talking right now, you know. This is what my gut brain is saying, you know. Uh, I am a servant to something or other that on the food that comes in I have to digest and, you know, I have to do what the unconscious thought cloud of the world bombards me with. I have to think those thoughts all day long. This is the neurons in the gut that they've discovered, right? <laughs> Adam had has he and his story, his story about all that gut brain thinking. I got brain neurons, right? And so, and so they're all they're all like creating this vision, this vision of a of a of a slave planet that I've created, and that and that I'm I've transported all my friends and relatives and a lot of strangers too, right? And cause their total destruction, and that there's no hope of escape because. Somebody or other has stolen my soul and uh, damaged it to such an extent that it can't be used. So there I am in the midst of this this nightmare, and I, I live you know I'm actually in the middle of a night of a meditation, so it's like a vision. And uh, so I remember the prayer of Saint Francis, where Saint Francis says he wants to align with God. You know, if we could just align our will with God, our purpose with God in every moment. And I'm thinking, well, if ever there was a moment, this is the moment to align my will with that of God and let God take care of everything, you know, and to take all my code creative power, of which these people claim I have quite a bit and which has been totally misused, they say, and how am I to know the truth of this situation? Perhaps I have no soul. Perhaps I'm wrong about everything. Perhaps everything I've ever said or, or judged or done, every decision I've ever made has been against the will of God, you know? Who am I to know this? I'm not God, right? So, but even if I'm a faulty being that has no, like, reflection as God consciousness, nevertheless, there is a role for me in creation, right? And God will know this role. That is what I thought. God will know this role. So I thought, I will, and this is what I told them, I will place, I will place my faith in God. Their whole gig was, what do you want? What do you decide? You know, we let these people go. And that was the first thing I did. I said, I will let these people go that that have been ill influenced by my decisions, which were not in alignment with that of, 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 of creator of all, of God, of source, I will let them all go. Let them no longer be enslaved. That was the first thing. 
and that not only frees them but it frees my karma if a person with no soul could be said to have no karma <laughs> so then the second thing is whatever it is that I am this faulty servo mechanism this ego that forgets the, the true nature of reality that forgets that God is all whatever that is that I am I align that with God and I ask God I ask source to to decide for me the disposition of that which I am ha huh. and so then there was quite a commotion I was tired so I just wanted to to rest then so I reclined to rest and what I felt was beings of light all around me making changes in my in my aura and they said well what can we do about all this she has appealed to God and I also appealed to a uni the law of, of this universe not just the laws of this solar system or the laws of this galaxy but I said let the laws of, of this universe um, be, be blended like like a flower blooms with the with the laws of this particular like small part of all that is you know and so the light beings came in and they said um, well the best that we can do since you at, at stand as a celibate person uh, without a group without a group and you 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 believe um, only in God and in God's will we're gonna have to put you on your own on your own uh, alternate world all by yourself there'll be no more sentient beings there and so it's just gonna be you and and they tried all these things like um, I could hear the, the control beings would be saying something like and you may not live till tomorrow and like that and I'm going God's will you know it's completely up to God you know and they're saying and you have no soul so you have no afterlife and I'm going God's will so what you know <laughs> and all this time you know I'm thinking in retrospect really they're talking to my ego not to my soul and so and so I gave up on everything all my preconceptions about how things are and so forth and I'm lying down and the being, beings of light are working on me and explaining things to me and from this I gather that in this alternate world where I am right now if you consider that just as a a working mental filter um, I am that which is Gaia as well as that which seems to be this being I am um, I am all the history of Gaia is within this physical form and these energetic bodies that I am and I am that transport system as is each of us human beings I am that transport system that allows all beings to go and experience God and everything that is close to God in the higher dimensions so I'm not so different from everyone else but many people are just not there yet you know they they're not at that place where they want to um, where they want to experience the world of all possibilities they're just not there so in the meantime I am safely on an alternate world where there are no sentient beings with whom I need interact and where there is direct communication with source <laughs> so all's well that ends well in the nightmare department <laughs> and and then until the next thing comes up and the next dark night of the soul is resolved I'm very happy to say I'm at a at a point where I can just be be who I am for a little while and look forward with great joy to the next chance to jump into the void <laughs> Now I gather from this that these types of visions, which I've had a time or two in the past, are a very um, creative attempt by the hand of God 
to allow me to integrate the deep emotions of the unconscious mind and of the unconscious collective mind with the outpouring creative through both through the three heart centers so that the 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 humankind and so that I can can impulse onward into the into the regenerative um, stage of, of this great planet and this great galaxy and this great universe. So the um, like the vividness, the the depths of fear, the the um, the depths of un not knowingness that we encounter in what might be termed um, the dark night of the soul episodes are the springboard from which we can leap into deeper faith and deeper co-creative ability along with aligned with the will of God. Uh, so this is the void of which uh, many have spoken recently. It, the void is is the dark night of the soul and the moment of letting go of surrender to divine to divine guidance that that step into nothingness that step into not knowingness is the is the beginning of our mastery it's the tool that with which we need to become familiar in order to achieve this co-creation uh, this co-creative skill at first, the very first few times, it's very scary. But um, as time goes on and as faith deepens, we become, we can become adepts at this. I am certain of it. All humankind will do so. So for now, talk to you later. Love you lots. So I'd just like to add a little postscript. Actually, kind of two postscripts. Uh, in a situation like this, which as I mentioned has come up before, well, what seems like a terrible nightmare uh, that ends in a way that is unexpected and, um, uh, and like that, what seems like a terrible experience for, of, of subconscious energies, to me it seems like what's really taking place is um, an upwelling, an upwelling of like dark, Dark, darkness and upwelling of, of incomplete understanding of the way things are from the collective subconscious of humankind from the unconscious thought cloud of the world which is always connected with my own lower chakras right so so what is happening is a clearing a clearing for me of those energies I would say for all those that that, that wish to be involved in this transformative process but not a clearing for those that don't wish to be so there's no element of like um, uh, control here or power over or like that but merely a conscious um, bringing up of a bolus of subconscious uh, very very dark deep uh, dense subconscious energies comes up the spinal column right through through the heart chakras it is transformed and and into the higher chakras through the indigo up way high up it is transformed into something totally different not just for me but for for all those other beings who are participating in the process and who wish for transformation you know and so what appears to be a nightmare is really a process of, I guess it, they call it in psychology, sublimation, the changing into the superconscious mind of these things, the, the total transformation. And also, here's the second point. In the many years I used to work for a living, before my retirement, my happy retirement, I, I undertook many different jobs and very varied jobs and um, until I reached a point where, where I started saving for retirement and then um, I, I 
went on staff at, in the University of California system at UCLA in the lowly position of administrative assistant. But for all the prior years, um, I had had all different sorts of jobs, right? And the question when you switch from one vocation and avocation to the next is, how do you phrase your resume? How do you, how do you, how do you persuade your next employer that you have experience about something? And the thing that I learned uh, from books about resume writing, I learned that the thing that I carry forward from one um, job to the next job is not so much the, the details, the facts of the work that I do, but the set of skills that I acquire along the way. Okay, so, so for each job on my resume that I had had before, I would look for the skills that I acquired there, and then I would look at the resume, uh, the requirements, the requirements for the, for the job that I was looking at, to see if I had the skills that would be needed for my, for my new position. And if so, then I would submit, submit, um, I would submit a resume that included those skill sets which we had been learned in each prior occupation. Okay, so from that, what I'm, and it was a, a very successful technique, I would say. I, w I would have no trouble getting future jobs, even if they weren't in my, in my, um, in my previous experience. It was a, it's a wonderful thing to think of the skills rather than the factual content of what we're doing. And how does that apply to the current nightmare scenario resolution sub sublimation <laughs> process? Well, I'm looking at last night, and what I see, the, the main thing that springs out is, is the development of, of, of letting go and surrender and, and faith in the, un, in, 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 in the unknown, in, in a situation of dark night of the soul, to have that faith that carries us through. And last night was a chance to practice that. And, and how can we practice that unless what we experience contradicts the very fundament of our faith? The, the idea that we have a soul, the idea that we live in a caring universe, um, Unless, when all those things are, are called in question, what, what still remains? That faith, that faith in, in God it carries us through these experiences of death and near death and death of the ego and so forth. Only that faith can do it. Only that faith. So, so last night was a chance for me to practice my, my faith skill. <laughs> the other thing I learned is that where the mental mind can't resolve an issue, where it seems there is no, there is no way out, and no way of creating um, uh, agreement amongst peoples, that, that God always finds a way to allow free will to express itself, you know, the, God will always find a way. And so, so that was the second thing, is that not only can I develop faith, but that there will be a solution through God. So in those terms, in terms of the developing skill set, I think in the ongoing uh, possibilities, I think last night was a wonderful success. <laughs> T trying, a trying situation, a difficult day, and the, uh, the outcome was really wonderful.